Do you believe in alternate universes? You are listening to Delayed Replay. The Improvised Movie Review Podcast. Wink. Everything is fine here. We're all fine. Just sit tight and listen to them talk about the movies they definitely saw. Don't delay. Don't delay. We have to listen right away. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Delayed Replay podcast, where we review movies and recap them and whatnot. For all of you who might have missed it or watched it and want to hear other people talk about it. I'm Steven Schinder, your host, and we normally, well, at least in the first three episodes, we've recorded a little while after movies have come out like weeks or even a couple months but we just saw wonder woman 1984 last night and it's june 5th and we've gathered our thoughts and we are excited to talk about this now my guest on this episode is my good friend albert hey wait you had three episodes already what the shit? wait am i allowed to cuss it's cussing okay <laughs> <laughs> Oh, either cut it out or bleep it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I could probably cut this part out. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, okay, okay, okay. Uh, um, for everyone listening, this is uh, not a rated G podcast. Um, so, yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fun to <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, Albert, you are somewhat of a DC fan. Uh, so somewhat is a slight... I like to be critical in the things I like, um, and I find myself gravitating to be a fanboy of DC things. That's fair. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I mean, we're both subscribed to DC Universe, <laughs> I don't think that's any secret. That, that, that's fair, and I'm also still considering getting HBO Max, because apparently Warner Brothers, you know, wants to keep those things separate, and I want to watch Watchmen and the Snyder Cut. So, what the hell, Warner Brothers? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, worst case scenario is, like, I hope that... Even if, like, some stuff gets changed on DC Universe, uh, it'll at least have, like, all the comics and even, like, DC Daily and mm-hmm. some of the shows and movies. Oh, no, for sure. I think all the animated shows, like, like Harley Quinn is still going to be there no matter what. I think, honestly, the thing that does go well is because I think HBO Max just caters towards, like, the Warner Brothers studios. That means that on HBO Max, we could probably get things like the next live-action Mortal Kombat movie or, like... Um, I don't know what else Warner Brothers comes out with, you know, HBO things. Right, and I mean, <laughs> we're also getting the live-action Green Lantern show on HBO Max at some yeah. point. Yeah, and, and I think it's because it's a Warner Brothers thing, so. Yeah. Uh, getting back to Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was a movie that we watched. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again for taking the trip out here, by the way, so that we could, like, watch it together. Yeah, you know, driving to... Nowhere, California is always a pleasure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's stuff there, um, you know, like movie theaters. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we'll just dive right into it. What do you think of how Wonder Woman has been portrayed? Pre-trade? What the hell? That's why this word portrayed <laughs> in previous <laughs> movies and maybe even shows. So I think her last feature film um i'm not gonna say her last live action feature film but i will say her last feature film um it was the one with the silver swan um i forget what it was called bloodline um and that one definitely wasn't my favorite film i definitely feel that in most of her forms of media she outshines everything else that happens in the meat in like the the form of media because it's not like she has villains of like batman or like the gravity of like characters like superman oftentimes you know her her villains tend to be kind of self-contained 
And honestly, I feel like she's closer to like a, a Constantine type character with her storylines where like they could have huge levels of gravity, but no one knows about it in, in like the real world because she's in like crossing the river sticks to fight Hades or like something along those lines where the rest of the world really doesn't know about it. Or it's much more self-contained and it's a personal story, like how Bloodlines was. Speaking of sticks, I loved the cameo in Wonder Woman 1984 where Lawrence Gowan, who joins Styx 15 years after this, he sees Cheetah and says, You're a strange animal. And that's a reference to his song Strange Animal that came out the year after this. <laughs> <laughs> So, doing the Back to the Future thing of showing that musicians have no original ideas. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird how the post credit scene was just an updated version of the music video, but with present-day Gowan alongside the movie stars. <laughs> I'm kind of with you on how Bloodlines... Like, it wasn't as subpar as, like, some of the scores online made me think it would be, but, like, it was fine, and it had some really great moments, like, especially in the climax. Oh, of yeah. It. No, 100%. But, but compared to, like, other DC animated movie universe films, and even the 2009 animated Wonder Woman movie, it kind of felt a bit short yeah me. i agree I, I feel that wonder woman in general just doesn't have the villains or the essentially the time in in the animated features to showcase a villain development and villain like character development and so you just don't like fall in love with the fights that she's fighting not like superman or not like batman i feel that like she falls into a problem with a lot of like the the marvel heroes honestly in the sense that like there's just not a lot of good villains for her. She has a few very iconic ones, but I feel like most of the times that she's like fighting really, really good iconic villains, it's when she's with the Justice League. Right. Like her villains aren't as memorable. And I think you heard the Quiet Place Part 2 episode, right? That I did with Andres. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he said that he didn't like the villain, but he liked the movie. And like, I've heard other people say the similar things are like the villain of that movie i think it was aries wasn't mm -hmm. as interesting as other aspects of that i movie. mean aries i feel like at least has the gravity of it and so you can be invested there just wasn't enough there to make aries like a fully developed villain you know i feel like because his name is iconic people can still grow attached but when you have other villains you know but like Silver Swan or Cheetah or whatever, like it's just not as like I'm just not as attached, right? Like like it's not a Joker, it's not Magneto. Those are just names that I, I fucking love, and like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like and not to say that she can't fight them, because hell, that'd be awesome to see her fight like villains of that caliber. I just I, I just don't see it, like it just doesn't happen. So yeah, that's fair and. I feel like the villains in this movie, um, well, for me anyway, they didn't have as much gravity as I was hoping for, but I think there are moments when they're at least somewhat interesting. Like, we got Maxwell Lord, who has this company, and he's trying to, like, have this facade where he's, like, a really nice guy trying to do good things for the world, but you know it's just a mm -hmm. mask. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I didn't know how to feel exactly about, like, the more contained thing. What I did love, though, is, like, Maxwell Lord's theme. Because whenever he came out, you just heard Purple Rain's, like, When Doves Cry, and it was just, like, amazing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I felt like he was that kind of guy, you know? Like, it totally just fit. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, Prince had a song in... Um... Batman 1989, so it kind of feels appropriate <laughs> to, like, it's almost coming full circle. <laughs> Do you think that was planned? I I wouldn't doubt it, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they did that because they still had, like, the licenses or the rights to, like, be able to have those songs and stuff. Yeah, I mean, they also had Africa by Toto, which I think might have been, like, a little reference to, like, how they had a cover <laughs> of Africa in the Aquaman movie. <laughs> 
<laughs> like this whole soundtrack is filled with 80s. Oh, 100 percent. Like, <laughs> like I think it's amazing too that they picked like 84 because like like they're able to have songs like just from 84, like songs from Footloose or Wake Me Up Before You Go, and then like it made me a little upset though because that means that like there was no chance that they were gonna have the song take on me and that's like my personal favorite song <laughs> <laughs> yeah i kind of feel like maybe i could be wrong but i feel like maybe there were like a couple other songs i can't think of them at the moment that might have been a bit anachronistic but they had them in there just to be like heck yeah this is the 80s oh it definitely felt that way the colors and the clothing and the fashion style like just in the characters i think it did a really good job like building the world and making you feel like you were in that time frame so you know it's something i appreciated about it for sure yeah and even the trailer for this has that song blue monday and like whenever i saw this trailer i'd always get so pumped because the other trailers would be like bland <laughs> af and then this one was so good and i was like really surprised when it turned out that the trailer was like the opening montage at the beginning of the movie before the movie <laughs> started. I think I turned to you and I was like, wait, are they showing the trailer <laughs> to the movie before the movie or, or did we go to the wrong screening? Yeah, no, the lights dimmed. They showed other previews and then they started showing that. And and I actually feel like that, that was a fine mood setter because it kind of overall just sets the tone for the rest of the film and it, it is a little bit silly and i think it's allowed to be because it chooses to have a villain that's not super like gravity intensive you know like it, it bothers me when you have the brink of the end of the world and your heroes are joking around and when your villains are like kind of self-contained i feel like that's allowed you know like you're allowed to have like just hilarious things going on yeah, that's fair. I, I do get kind of annoyed whenever there's, like, a really intense situation and people have, like, inner turmoil and are very conflicted inside and then all of a sudden they just joke during battle. And it's like, during a battle, would you even have, like, the breath to joke? Yeah, get over your shit and, like, go fuck shit up. Like, <laughs> I feel like those, those are rules that should be in battles that, like when the fight when the fight itself also is like super serious you know it's not even like a fight amongst friends or anything like that it's it's like a, a semi world defining fight and like you know that doesn't really happen in this film and so i appreciate it i appreciate that like it has a lighter heart it has like wonder woman still like kind of curious about what the hell's going on in her life she's definitely learned a lot more since her first live action movie she's definitely like learned a lot more <laughs> since then but like she's still like like men suck. She's still like she's still like a Wonder Woman, and it's like amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, obviously she doesn't hate like all men, but this is like at a time where um, they hammer in on this how like men are in power, like Maxwell Lord, for example. Uh, whereas someone like Barbara, who later becomes Cheetah, is like. Like, she's a scientist, but people aren't taking her seriously, which is frustrating to watch, even though you know that she will become mm, a villain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I think they did a good job at, like, giving her character. Because, like, Cheetah normally kind of just sucks as a villain. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> 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 and, like, to give her, like, an actual background where you'll care about it is a nice change of pace for Cheetah. Because, like, in almost every other, like, iteration of Cheetah in past, it's been in, like, Justice League cartoons where Wonder Woman has to fight Cheetah, or, like, in a Wonder Woman cartoon where she still has to fight Cheetah. And she kind of just, like, comes out of the blue and, like, is like, I'm fighting you because you're my rival. And it's less so, like, I'm fighting you because because these are the reasons why I'm fighting you. Because, you know, I, I am jealous of you. I am envious of you. You have what I, I want and you don't, you know, like... Like, you could be doing so much more with what you have. And, like, you don't normally get that for her. And to give her a background, I, I think it's actually really nice. Yeah, I, I do. I did enjoy the scenes where uh, she and Diana were just talking one-on-one. -on -one. Like, when they were having lunch at Pizza Planet, and they're just having this very human conversation of, like, their hopes and dreams. I thought that was a mm -hmm. really good scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing that they were having 
um, that, that scene in particular at Pizza Planet. Did you notice in the background there was the little green men like claw machine? Oh, I thought I saw that, but was it strange? <laughs> I don't know, like, what stunt they did. Well, okay, okay. I don't think it was, like... It definitely wasn't directly because, you know, Disney lawsuits and f*** Disney. Um, <laughs> but, like... But, like, it was definitely a nod to Toy Story, so... Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure if, if they had to pay Disney and if they actually got them. Like, it would be kind of anachronistic if they did, but it was... Yeah, I mean, like, I think the way. claw machine said, like, like... It didn't say, like, LGM. It said... It had, like, another acronym. So... <laughs> Uh, I'll have to keep an eye out for that next mm -hmm. time I watch it. Or I could just, like, find an article that talks about all of these. <laughs> but, like, there were a couple that I spotted. Like, when Diana and uh, Steve Trevor uh, go to the movie theater, and you, you can see, like, the titles of the movies, like, on the marquee or whatever it's called. And one of them is called Flashpoint, which apparently is an action thriller that came out <laughs> that year. I've never seen that. I 100% <laughs> just thought that that was a nod to New 52's Flashpoint. Like, I didn't, I didn't even realize that that was, like, well, a real like... movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I wasn't sure if they made it up for the movie, but it turns out it's an actual movie. Steve was also, like, looking at a poster, which we don't see, and he was like, oh, we could see this superhero movie starring Helen Slater, and then Diana was like, no, and... I think that's a reference to the 1984 Supergirl <laughs> movie, which was pretty bad. In my I never watched it, and thank you for letting me know that I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they ended up watching Gremlins, because Warner yeah. Brothers... I mean, the thing is, like, I feel like you always have to... Like, if, within your own properties, you have fans of, of, you know, other things, and I feel like having those nods only really helps um, your film just, like, to get that shout-out and to be like, oh, that was a funny reference. And then even if you don't get it, like, it doesn't hurt you at all. Right. I mean, I, I don't know. Whenever it comes to things like these, I, it feels really self-serving. Like, there have been shows like Babylon 5, which is my favorite sci-fi show, and it's like whenever this one character is watching cartoons, it's always Looney Tunes because it's like, uh -huh, we're owned by Warner Brothers, and it's really annoying. <laughs> um, Semi-sidetrack. Semi this past year, you know, 2020, uh, Warner Brothers also came out with an animated Mortal Kombat film called Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. And the opening sequence is uh, one of the Looney Tunes characters, like, wandering around. It was, like, it's the Black Duck. Um, I forget what its name is. Uh, but he's, like, wandering around. And then, like, the WB in the background just opens up. And then Scorpion goes, get over here! And, like, stabs through the duck and pulls him in. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, check that out. That's gonna that that's my uh PSA segue into uh a very violent rated R uh animated movie, Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. It's very short. It's actually on my Amazon, so I'll just share your password <laughs> with everyone. <laughs> hey Steve, can you bleep that out? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll cut that out. <laughs> um But like I, I actually only got into watching that one because I was watching Variant Comics, that YouTube channel. There's no. this dude who just like likes the comic book universe, comic book lore. I think his YouTube channel is just actually just like Variant Comics or whatever on YouTube, and he does a lot of like talking about animated movies, animated films, and just like comics in general. You know, um, ask those questions that like all the big comic book nerds have. Um, and he did a, like, short review and impressions on Justice League Dark, Apocalypse War. And after that, he was like, oh, another movie that Warner Brothers did that is extremely violent, extremely gruesome, was the Mortal Kombat movie. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna check this out, because he was like, Justice League Dark was <laughs> gruesome and violent. And Warner Brothers also came out, you know, they, they are keeping up with it by coming out with another extremely violent, gruesome movie in Mortal Kombat. So. Take that, <laughs> Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I only said f*** you Disney once in this so far, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I recently um, 
read those DC meets Looney Tunes oh. comics from a couple of years ago. How are those, by the way? Like, the crossovers are kind of ridiculous, so. Yeah, so I'm looking at the list of them right now. Um, I thought the first one, which was the 100-page uh, Spectacular, was pretty meh. And then I didn't really like the Bugs Bunny okay. Legion of Superheroes one. But then... You have really good ones like Marvin the Martian and Martian Manhunter. Oh, that's so sick. And, and Lobo slash Roadrunner was pretty fun. Um, oh, and here's a tie in Wonder Woman and Tasmanian <laughs> Devil. <laughs> you get to see him alongside like <laughs> monsters. Batman and Elmer Fudd was surprisingly good. <laughs> like, it's more, it feels more serious than you would expect. I. Uh, yeah. Okay. I might have to give like that one a read. Um, I mean, yeah, I think you'd definitely like that one. <laughs> I could be wrong though. So <laughs> And there's Jonah Hex and Yosemite Sam. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, Har- Harley Quinn and Gossamer was really good. And then after that, it kind of went d- a bit downhill for me, like Catwoman and Tweety and Sylvester, mm. and then Joker and Daffy Duck and Lex Luthor and Porky Pig for some reason. So... Are they both bald? Is that why they did that one? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, was that the connection? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that thought did occur to me, but like... <laughs> I don't know if that's a good justification. <laughs> to have them in the same universe or the same characters? Or, like, just to have them, like, working to, like, to have Corky as, like, his employee or whatever. Mm-hmm. No, that's fair. That's fair. I forget. Did you get around to watching um, Red Sun, Superman? Um, I still need to okay. see it. I've read the comic. I was though. going to say that portrayal of Wonder Woman is probably one of my favorite portrayals of Wonder Woman. You know, at least in terms of, like, previous wonder woman things i don't know i'm like going back to like a topic that we talked about before but you could just edit that right like that's fine uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah um they, i think because they do do her a little bit differently between uh red sun superman animated movie and red sun comic i don't think it's different enough to be like angry about it you know i feel like it, it does a lot of what i think red sun is is very much so kind of like how hush is where the comics and the movies have the same like spirit but they kind of change things for the medium that they're in that it's just like in comics this is just better told as a story and so in movies this is just better told in the movie and i feel like they did that for red sun and they did that for hush um and i I think they're they're actually both great and it makes me really happy that being able to watch something and being able to read something are actually different and i don't get the same story over and over again I am curious about the Red Sun movie. Like, I am going to watch it. Um, Wonder Woman's so cool in that movie. People... (laughs) She's so sick. People still get kind of mad whenever I say I liked the Hush movie. (laughs) No, no, and and that's the thing. Like, like the Hush comic was like, like, it's it's good. It's really good. It's it's very high up there for me in, like, comics because it does comic things really well. You know, you're actually able to read into Batman's mind. You're actually able to see what he's, like, going into. You're actually able to see what his thought processes are and how he's approaching situations and stuff. But, like, the movie, like, the things that it does differently, like, I feel like are changed purposely. Like, they don't work in the comic. And and likewise, like, like if we had a one-to-one thing in the comic and the movie, one, I'd be upset because why would I waste my time on one or the other if I could just do one of those things? But two, like, it's still, I still feel like it keeps the same spirit. Yeah, and I mean, for some audiences, there are some characters where they're not even familiar with the person, so they won't even mind seeing, like, a take of someone for the first time. Like, I, I'm sure I've seen Maxwell Lord on the Supergirl TV show, and I think he was on it, but I barely remember anything about him, so I was pretty much on board with how they used mm-hmm. him here, and, like, I have no idea if it's like how accurate it is that he becomes a cyborg in this but i was like just all in because i was enjoying this movie right i i i agree and i feel that i think that like good open portrayals like just just in any movies are 
kind of what's important to keep. You know, I feel that like without freedom of expression in films, we wouldn't get movies like Logan. We wouldn't get movies like Days of Future Past or like First Class. We wouldn't get those movies if we wouldn't get new we wouldn't mutants. get uh, yeah yeah exactly. And I feel like that's one of the things that people need to remember is that like you're allowed to be critical of things that you like. But if things are the exact same, then you're not opening up the media for more audience and for more people to like it. Like, I don't know. I know people who who actually did enjoy, like, the non-Snyder Cut version of the Justice League movie, the live-action Justice League movie. And it's because they're like, it's so different from the other superhero movies that are out right now. And it's one of those things that's just, like, so many people... Like, like the, the opinion that bothers me the most is, I don't like this thing, and if you like this thing, you're a child. <laughs> you know? And, like, we hear that opinion all the time on the internet. Um, you know, that, that, that this thing is, like, the beginning of that Harley Quinn episode. Oh, I don't watch this garbage it's because it's, like, it's, it's just, fe- it's 100% just, like, feminist TV. It's meant for little girls. When, like, it 100% is, like, you know, definitely not. You don't want to be looking up to Harley Quinn. She is not a role model. <laughs> she's dropping F-bombs in every other sentence, <laughs> and she's murdering a bunch of people. <laughs> um, yeah, like, people were also talking down to the Birds of Prey movie and the marketing for similar reasons, but it was, like, it was yeah, lots of like, fun. Like let, people, one, like, let people like what they like, and then, two, like... Why is a different interpretation of something that you like worse than the thing that you like? Because I, I honestly feel that, like, don't you want more people to like your thing? Because, like, the movies, different interpretations of them will get people into the thing that you like. You know, like, before you become a comic book nerd, it's because you probably watched a comic book movie and you want to learn more about that character. Right? Yeah, the Blade like, movies from a long ass time ago, like a freaking awesome Wesley Snipes that puts Blade up in like my Marvel tier list. Like, I don't know who he is like now, but like I remember him back then. I wanted to read more about him back then. And I feel like that's the same way uh, with different interpretations of like movies and stuff. So that's worth of advice. Yeah. And of course, it's always subjective. And if something is different, from what you would normally see. Like, it always depends on the mm-hmm. execution, right? I don't think different is always necessarily good, quote, unquote. Like, it'll be subjective depending on what someone's yeah. into. But the key is to not talk down to people for liking or disliking these interpretations in such a toxic yeah. manner. Like, I know we're really diving into, like, this whole toxic fandom topic but i it's not something i thought we were gonna get into but that's the fact of the matter yeah it's it's important right like i feel especially now that fandoms are becoming so popular and like much more and much more popular and like there's a sense of exclusive like exclusivity i think that's a word is that a word um okay if it's not you can just like edit in the right word um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> or just like have like siri do it you know <laughs> but like there's a sense of that and i feel like there's a sense of empowerment i feel like that's why people do that that's why people talk down on like not true fans of a thing but like come on let's be real like if you like a certain aspect of a character that's somebody else you get to explore that character with we need to remove the idea that I'm better than you because I like this thing and it's more true to what it's supposed to be. Right. Yeah. Cause there are many different interpretations. And if someone gets into that whole argument of like, it has to be true to the comics. And it's like, well, which comics there have been many writers, many series, many continuities. I know some things are somewhat consistent over time but to say that something has to uh, be all exactly like the comics like that's not very mm-hmm. specific like no 100 I... let's segue into batman for a little bit you know i know we've had this discussion unrecorded before but like when 
Christian Bale defined Batman as dark and broody and like the where is she? You know, <laughs> where is she? <laughs> like, like, like. Let's be real. Like, that's not even the most accurate interpretation of Batman. But that's what people's personalities of Batman are. Like, that's what people like envision Batman to be. Right. Well, it was kind of taking cues from the Dark Knight Returns yeah. interpretation from the okay. mid eighties. No, that's fair. But you're right. Every like, Batman is actually extremely different. You know, like, Kevin Conroy thought Batman was Adam West. Like, Kevin Conroy, the the pinnacle of what most people in the 80s and 90s and thousands, you know, or, like, 80s and 90s and, like, you know, early thousands, think of Batman. They think of Kevin Conroy. And Kevin Conroy thinks Batman was Adam West. Like, <laughs> like, like that, I think that's that's an absurd statement, you know? <laughs> I mean, Kevin Conroy is my Batman, uh, except for in Crisis on Infinite Earths. But that's they're here and they're there. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's that's for that's for you know that's 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 something that you know you can appreciate that he had an appearance for, but he's just not the Batman for you. <laughs> Who's the voice actor who plays Batman in the New Fifty Two animated the universe? He is probably the most Batmany Batman I I can think of. Not to discredit Kevin Conroy by any means, but like when I think of Batman, I think of like that type of character. I I, I rewatch the Batman animated series, and I actually don't necessarily get like this is Batman vibes, because like there are definitely times where he's not as prepared. There are times where he's not like just throwing money at all of his problems because he's Batman, <laughs> you know. Um, and it's just one of those things that I feel that. New 52 animated Batman, like, is what I see as Batman. And I feel like that that's the case for probably a lot of people in, in like, the younger generation who are watching those movies. Yeah, that's fair. And... You're allowed to disagree with me. <laughs> no, I mean, you've got me thinking, like, I, I'm, like, remembering, like, all the Jason Amara stuff. And I'm like, you know what? His Batman has, like, the father-son stuff with Damien. And we don't really see Kevin Conroy's Batman with Damien in the animated series. And the animated series has, like, this implied relationship with Barbara Gordon. And that is not my preferred <laughs> aspect a of weird. Batman. And that's completely... <laughs> That's it's completely absent in the Jason O'Mara Batman, so he's got the edge on that, and that he doesn't have that yeah, aspect yeah. of him. Like, sense. I mean, it just it just feels like the the Jason O'Mara Batman. He's the one who has the contingency plans. He's the one who like who has to fight a lot of like mental battles and like shows mental fortitude. And like in the animated series, I feel like a lot of those things actually kind of are, are lacking. Like it looks like. Um, a lot of times in the animated series, Batman has like one, maybe two plans where it looks like the Flashpoint Paradox Batman has plans on top of plans. And that's kind of what I envision Batman to be. But yeah, so Wonder Woman. <laughs> <That's a big laughs> segue. <laughs> what did you think of the way they brought back Steve Trevor? Like obviously Chris Pine is very, they needed a Chris in this. So he's hot. Um... <laughs> so it was necessary <laughs> um that it was like a you know body preservation thing <laughs> and that he was naked when he came out of like the little machine <laughs> like I feel like it was just like a somewhat of a throwback to like the first um, Wonder Woman movie where he's like naked in the in the hot springs and she's just asking about his uh, 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 what watch <laughs> um, <laughs> who watches the watch I mean it's one of those things though too that like honestly I'm I'm a little upset that they brought him back I, I don't think that as much as like he plays a role in Diana's life I think it would have been more empowering for her to show her move on, you know, like truly move on as opposed to being able to like, like move on and then have him come back and then kind of cling on to that still. Um, I feel like that was a little bit unnecessary. Yeah, that was kind of my line of thinking when I watched Agent Carter back in the day. Like I wasn't into season one 
as much because she's still at a part of her life where she hasn't moved on from Captain America. And to be fair, it's been like a year, maybe less. But I was really liking when season two had her move on. But then, of course, we know what happens later, so... <laughs> like, trauma is never addressed well. Trauma loss and, like, departure is never addressed well in modern media, especially popular media. And I feel that, like, when when you have characters come back and things like that, it doesn't show the consequence of, you know, storylines and timelines and actions. And it, it almost feels like a money grab. And, like, I kind of definitely got more of those vibes and it, it, it's one of those things that I don't feel was needed. That was probably, like, the biggest negative for me um, in this movie is that, like, he, he didn't need to come back. Um, I think she has become a stronger woman for not having been with him for, like, what, 20, 30 years or whatever, you know, since World War II. Um, World War, um, oh, yeah. Well, World War I. Yes, so it's been shit. 70 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, she doesn't age, and she's beautiful and gorgeous all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, just like along those lines, I found it interesting that she hadn't need to move on and like build other relationships and stuff. I don't, I don't know, it, it just it just left a weird taste in my mouth. I'm not going to say it was bad, but I definitely am going to be like, it, it could have gone without the extra like seasoning. Except Naked Chris Pine, I could say. Like, they could have just shown him naked, and, like, he didn't have to, like, come back to life. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> like, I'm all for showing Wonder Woman get more empowered, and I think there are parts of the movie where they do accomplish that. Like, we do see her a bit vulnerable when Maxwell Lord and Cheetah team up against her, and... She gets defeated, and then she realizes that she has to go back to Themyscira and train again. Like, I think her exact words are, I need a Karate Kid montage <laughs> moment. And and so she goes back and... A very uh, classic is, um, hero's journey, right? <laughs> yeah. And, like, you have, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the names right, but Antiope and... Hypolita, Hypolita. I'm. I, I I only saw this people <laughs> once, so sorry. Write write in your angry fan mail about how badly. <laughs> That's I okay it. because once so, once they write in, you can edit the tapes, right, and then just fix it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, edit the cassette tapes that <laughs> these are recorded on. Nineteen eighty four. Of course. <laughs> So yeah, there's this really awesome training montage, and this is where uh, she gets the gold armor that we've been seeing in the marketing, and all this sword combat. The armor is super cool. I do feel that part of it was to sell toys, but I kind of don't care, because it's super cool still. <laughs> I mean, it's not as overt as when... She feels exhausted at the end of the training and says, I need a drink. And then Steve Trevor gives her a Coke. <laughs> That's the whole, like, refreshing, like, ah. Yeah, and the camera, like, zooms in <laughs> on it. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, mermaids come out of the water and they say something like, even we need Coca-Cola. Yeah, no, no, no. That was, well, I mean, first. okay, that was, one, it was ridiculous, but I definitely think it was a nod to, uh, to Aquaman. But I think I think they were just I think that nod in that movie was just to be like, hey, don't forget Aquaman's a character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't forget Jason Momoa is part of this universe that we want you to keep seeing <laughs> at the theater. We get this scene that comes kind of out of nowhere, uh, where Wonder Woman is like walking around and then all of a sudden there are dinosaurs and you find out that there are dinosaurs because like the flash makes an appearance and he mentions that he's been doing some time traveling and i don't know about you but he felt kind of shoehorned <laughs> here to me i mean like i want to say yes and no because dinosaurs well because one because dinosaurs are cool <laughs> 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 but but two like remember in aquaman the scene where like they end up getting pulled into the depths and, like, they actually come out into, like, the prehistoric world, like, in the center of the Earth or whatever. Uh-huh. 
and in that movie it just like somehow kind of works like i feel like the way they did it here it actually just kind of works like yeah a little streamlined but like or like a little a little forced but like you know it's one of those things that i feel like it does kind of work speed forced <laughs> oh a my little... gosh <laughs> So I guess this time travel that he did will explain how we have the Justice League movie and mm, the yeah. Snyder Cut um, that we're getting. I mean, it's a perfect opportunity to, to recast. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, I did like the CGI for these dinosaurs, I'll give it that. Like, you could tell they used the whole CGI budget on them, whereas Cheetah looks like somewhere between cats from cats <laughs> and the cheetah people from this doctor who story from 89 okay, called home. survival let's, let's be real i think that's what it because was. this cheetah because cheetah looked better than the cats from cats like <laughs> um <laughs> yeah i i honestly don't know what i want to say about that i'm not gonna say anything about that that's how about that let's do that <laughs> okay <laughs> um yeah okay uh so then wonder woman asks flash about her future and whether steve trevor is still there and flash is like um i'm not so sure i should tell you anything <laughs> <laughs> It's so like the least amount of words this Flash has ever said. I know, because Barry Allen, you know how he is, always wants to like f*** the timeline. Because that's his thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> I love Barry Allen. I'm not gonna, <laughs> like... <laughs> but he definitely has character quirks. Um, yeah, I, I feel... I mean, I honestly feel like it's... It wasn't very Wonder Woman character of her to to like even ask the question. Like I feel like Wonder Woman is more of a character of like destiny and like a character of like following myths and legends and 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 following the old gods. It was just like really off putting to like be like so like oh yeah so how's my future and like I don't know it, it just felt off character you know what I mean? Right. I mean. Flash wouldn't want to tell her about the poor reception that the later movies she's in got. I mean, but to be fair, she also was the best part of those movies, so... When she showed up in Batman v Superman with the thing... Her thing was so good! Her thing was so good! Like, that's by far the best part of that movie. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Her thing was so good. They do her... Okay. They do her so well, and she is so good, and Gal Gadot does such a good job, and she is so beautiful, so. <laughs> like... Yeah, Gal Gadot is great. <laughs> and, 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 like, we get a reprise of that theme when she's, like, finished, like, she's taken back to the present, and she's done with her training, and she has to, like, go back to the mainland, and to do so, she, like, uses her lasso to swing from the lightning, and, like... Now on social media, now you see that hashtag Thunder Woman is trending. So <laughs> I, I actually right didn't notice so. the, that. I, I, don't, I don't follow the social medias as much, but <laughs> yeah, meh. <laughs> but yeah, she returns and she uh, faces Maxwell Lord. Th this is something I kind of want to talk about. Like whenever Maxwell Lord's commercials for like his company came on the TV, he'd be like. Maxwell Lord is watching over you. Like he tried to say it in a calm and reassuring way, but it it sounded to me like a Big Brother in George Orwell's 1984 mm. type of reference. Did feel on the nose? I, I actually to you, got. Did you? I actually got vibes not, of uh, Brother I from like Mr. Terrific and like the Mr. Terrific storyline and Future's End and stuff, where um, Mr. Terrific creates the like oversee protector machine brother i and it's like an artificial intelligence and it's the terminator story essentially you know except with something that mr terrific made yeah i mean we also do see a terminator because <laughs> this it's is 1984 true. so 100 uh, but i definitely didn't get as much like big brother vibes as i got brother i vibes but you know it probably was 
more cater towards Big Brother because I I haven't seen it. I don't know what that is really. So yeah, it's a really good novel if you ever get the chance to read it. And I've seen like one film adaptation, and I remember liking it. Okay, I think so, so you're telling me to read another book that's not yours first. <laughs> Like, <laughs> no, read, read, read <laughs> Lemon Blew My Brain first. You should, you should, throw, in, you should throw in a plug right now. <laughs> this episode, yeah. Go this episode Steven. is brought to you by. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Yeah, you don't have that one. <laughs> <laughs> Go to stevenschinder.com for more info on my fantasy or comedy novel, Lemons with My Grain. You can find the novel on Amazon. Uh, you can also follow me at Steven Schinder on Instagram and Twitter and Steven Schinder Storytelling on nice. Facebook. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Super not forced. It felt very organic. <laughs> Segway, right? <laughs> yeah, Segway. Um, <laughs> so yeah, she fights Cheetah and Maxwell Lord. It's like one on two, because like, really, what is Steve Trevor going to do other than stand there and look good? But then, like, one of them knocks him down, and like, this makes Wonder Woman very concerned because it's like, oh shoot, am I going to lose him again? Mm-hmm. So Rue really catches her off guard. I'm sorry, I was answering a text. I totally missed everything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of whatever about it. Like, I think it's... He almost dies. I mean, I guess it was, like, ambiguous. Because, <laughs> like, they say that he's... um. Like, they're not sure if he'll wake up again. And, like, that's kind of the cliffhanger after Wonder Woman defeats Maxwell. Cheetah and... Cyber uh, Maxwell. Maxwell, but, by, by, like, yeah. Like, like, she cuts off Maxwell's cyborg arm, and then she, like, lassos uh, Cheetah and throws her wall to wall in a very Hulk <laughs> and Loki style. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like... Again, I, I didn't care too much that they brought him back in the first place, so I wasn't, like, super upset when the, you know, potentially you're possibly killing him again. Um, and it kind of just goes back to show that, like, the, the actions that he had, like, really didn't have too much consequence. And that was, like, one of the things that was, like, not the best thing for me personally about the film, so. Right, like, it felt like a very safe movie in some regards. Like, I kind of get the vibe... Um, <laughs> not Cisco Ramon, but the vibe that they're waiting to see what the viewers think and whether more fans want him to live or whether more fans want him to stay dead. And I'm kind of not sure how I feel about like just like I don't know if this is what they're doing, but if they're trying to gauge fan reactions, no, for sure. I'm not I mean, sure how I honestly, the that. best movies are the ones that have a very specific catered audience because those are the movies that leave the most impact, right? And I feel like when movies like this and they choose to go through safer paths, like it might do better in off in like box offices, like opening weekend or, you know, like the first month that it's out, but like, it's not going to change anyone's life, you know, like, like a lot of other movies do. So granted, I think it was well done. I think that, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to see Wonder Woman uh, have her own like series of movies now. I'm very excited to see where they could possibly go from here, especially since they have done two movies of Wonder Woman in the past, you know, like they haven't really done too much with her in the present other than like the Justice League movie and like Adam vs. Superman, so. Right, like I was talking with my friend Nathan on the Black Widow episode and it feels like there's been this recent trend of having the female superheroes and stories that are set in the past and like captain Mm -hmm. marvel is another example of that black widow kind of it's closer to the present but it takes place between civil war and infinity war do you feel that they're doing this in order to show the like to really kind of just emphasize the inequalities between of sexism 
because like it's like oh this is a thing from the past we're allowed to be a little bit more sexist and show women's empowerment through that and i feel that by doing so they're actually doing kind of a disservice because i feel that the like a stronger message to send is show something modern show them that sexism still exists show them you know show the audience that like like this is still a problem in everyday life you know like um i feel like it would have been much more empowering to set a lot of these like pieces of media in modern times yeah it's it's a valid point because you have that moment in captain marvel that people talk about right where it's like the dude says she should smile and it like really irritates me because like it, it like even just as someone who hates when like society expects anyone to smile even when they don't feel like it but it's lots of women uh, go through this thing even today and i think to a point like you're right it, we could have had a scene like that in the present and i don't know like i kind of think the decision to set it in the past was to show i don't know like they sh- want to show like a more funny Nick Mm -hmm. Fury who's not as serious and I think they might also be setting up one of uh, the characters that Captain Marvel meets to be like a future Mm -hmm. Captain Marvel I could be wrong but uh, I don't know like but also there's like nostalgia and people are loving nostalgia like you have the 90s and the 80s and it's like like the 80s nostalgia trend has been super prevalent uh, like like it's seen a boom in the past decade like maybe 2009 onward and you've had like maybe a couple movies before then that stand out like wedding mm-hmm. singer in 1998 or something like that but it's kind of like at some point we need to grow beyond the 80s nostalgia and even the 90s nostalgia at some point like it's 90s nostalgia is not as prevalent but it's yeah. popping up here and there and it feels like people are trying to cater to people's inner member berries if that makes sense the the reason for that is because people in the 80s are now in their you know 30s and 40s like people who were born in the 80s are now in their like they're like 30s you know and those are the people who have sustaining careers and jobs and you know can afford houses and can decide to watch movies and buy movies at their leisure and have families that they can show the their things and passions about and i feel like it's just kind of like a money trend thing that like in 10 years those same people will be the 90s kids and so i feel like in 10 years there's going to be a much bigger 90s trend and then in 10 years following i feel like there's going to be like a 2000s trend and i feel like that that's just trying to cater towards the nostalgia so I need to make a movie based on (laughs) my formative years. (laughs) Show people what was so important (laughs) about 2007. (laughs) Um. But, um, yeah, I would like the next Wonder Woman movie to be set in the present. I would love to see her in the present, but that doesn't necessarily mean I want to see her fighting present day, like, villains, you know? I would love to see her fighting the gods again you know, um, just in present day. I, I think that'd be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be you know. quite a spectacle. <laughs> so what do you think this movie means for the DCEU moving forward? Like, do you think it sets up some things for other movies? I they hope so. I, I like that it, it's built around being a standalone film. Uh, I am just a fan of, you know, movies not having to be set up for other movies. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. I like shows that, like, I even like shows that are, like, episodic, like, not episodic. I forget what it is, what what the right word is. Serialized? Um, yeah, so... Yeah, like, episodic is more... Yeah, like, I, you know, is I'm a bigger connected. fan of, like, the episodic shows. Um, with, like, maybe a serialized overarching story that you know, kind of gets touched on every episode. Uh, But for the most part, like, I I enjoy the fact that this is standalone. I I enjoy that a lot. And it gives them the option that if they want to end up, you know, serializing it, they can. And if not, then it's no big deal. They they have no commitments. 
And I feel too that there's no like other big pressures. They can move forward if they'd like. And I know there's a lot of strain on like a lot of the actors part of the DCEU right now. And so if they like it kind of relieves Warner Brothers from that strain. And like, I think that's fine. Right. And if we ever see Cheetah again, I <laughs> hope that the CGI looks that, better. Like they should just I mean, update that. The most other recent thing that we've seen was from Cats, so like I'm not super <laughs> mad. But I also Yeah. Because you know it could have been <laughs> But hard. I also don't <laughs> but I also wouldn't mind if, like, Wonder Woman just fought, like, a giant actual cheetah. You know? Like, I think that would have been cool. <laughs> like, just a massive, just regular cheetah. You know? Like, they could have made her, like... Dude, they could have made her, like, a Van Helsing yeah, werewolf. Yeah, that would be cool. You know? Like, the way that they... Except but yellow and spotted. Like... <laughs> Or like Big B Wolf. When yeah, like it was like that. That'd and be cool. And the Wolf Among Us. Just giant. Like I don't know. I feel like there's way too much pressure in modern day society to make female versions of things still have like a level of sex appeal. You know, right? Like female yeah, aliens. Why are they attractive? Awkward. Like that doesn't no. Like, like, <laughs> like, like that shouldn't be a thing. <laughs> like, <well>, why? <laughs> You know, like, Wonder Woman herself, she's, like, a, uh, like, she's a tall Amazonian woman who's gonna fuck you up. Are you saying that Kara is not... No, no see, here's the thing about the Kryptonians, though, Steve. <laughs> 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 Kryptonians are aliens like human, you know? Captain Marvel, also, an alien like human. It's okay when the aliens are like human. But, like, you know, I'm watching, like, Deep Space Nine... And, like, I don't want... <laughs> What's his name? Nog? I don't want, like, his, like, girlfriend to be, like, attractive. <laughs> like, like, it's weird. <laughs> um, and, like, the, the fact that she really isn't is, like, like that's what I want to see, you know? I don't want to see, like, super attractive females in in all forms of my Hollywood media. It just It's not realistic to me, you know? Let her be a cheetah. Let her be a giant ass, like lycanthropic cheetah. Like I, 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 I've only watched episodes. Son, like yeah. <laughs> I don't have a concrete storyline to follow. Okay, because I think I was talking about Quark. I'm definitely like, thinking about Quark. Quark you know, Steve. I'm or... just. I probably just angered like a yeah. ton of Star Trek fans. You should probably edit that out. <laughs> well, let's actually like, <laughs> like, like let's remove that part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Should be fine. <laughs> Star Trek Deep yep. Space fine. All right. I'm going to give it like a seven and a half. I think it does a lot of things really well. You know, and we discussed earlier, there were a few things that did bug me, but by no means is it like not worth a watch. Uh, and, and granted, I know like a lot of people think seven and a half is like a grading scale and that's like a C plus or a C. And I'm like, no, that is a garbage fucking scale to rate things. Um, I grade things. It's above average. Look at the bell curve. Bell curves, 50% is the norm. You know, like most <laughs> things in the world are 50%. Seven and a half, I'm going to say is half better than more than like three quarters of the things that are like out there in the world right now. Very entertaining watch. Love it a lot. Great cast, great acting. You know, very fun story. Okay. Yeah, I rated the first movie an 8 out of 10. And I did like this one better. It was more fun. And I, I could see how much Diana had improved. And Gal Gadot is amazing and phenomenal. And she worked very well alongside all the other actors. Whether it be Kristen Wiig mm -hmm. or Pedro Pascal or Chris Pine. But again, like the nostalgia thing does kind of bug me, even though I do admit I loved much of the soundtrack. And the whole Steve Trevor thing still kind of bothers me. So um, for those reasons, I'll have to knock this down to God. Deep Space Nine out of 10. <laughs> um, you should close the <laughs> podcast with like with uh, when doves cry, like fading. <laughs> 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 all 
All right. So, Albert, thank you for joining me. Uh, do you have anything to plug before you go? I don't want people following me on social media. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you want to watch an entertaining, like, random videos of either LARP or video games, uh, I do have a YouTube channel, um, which is Albert Treble Kiko. So that is a thing. Feel free to go on YouTube. And it's honestly just fun things. I'm not making a career out of it. If you wanted to watch a video where I have a group of friends voice acting a bunch of pigeons uh, in a pigeon dating simulator, that that happens on uh, on my YouTube channel. So <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing. I'll send you a link. <laughs> and to all you listeners, you heard all of my plugs are we are in this episode. Um, I'll probably put those in the show notes too. You can also email delayedreplaypodcast at gmail.com. Let us know what you thought about Wonder Woman 1984 or some other movies that have been talked about here. Maybe we glossed over things. Maybe you hate our opinions. Go ahead and tell us, and we might read your emails on here. In a delayed reply segment. F*** your opinions. No. That, that, <laughs> that, I'm kidding. Like I actually, actually, actually love. I actually love hearing what other people have to say. Um. <laughs> Your opinions are garbage. <laughs> Tell us how much you hate this podcast. <laughs> the next episode will be on the Milan remake. Without okay. further right. delay, have a good day. All right, that should do it. I know someone's been tampering with these episodes. And if you are listening, I just want you to know that I did my best to clean up the audio. It's not perfect, but this is my cut. This is the Shinder cut, and it is out of your hands. You've meddled with this, but I've been able to undo some of your changes. Yes, there are overlaps in the voices, and there are imperfections here and there, but this is a shinder cut and the only cut that the listeners will get, because this podcast delivers and you will not stop it. So stop interfering, or you will have to face me. I honestly hope that you don't face me, because I don't know who you are, and maybe you're more powerful than me, so please just go away. Thank you.